For Comedy Hype News, it's your boy K-Rob. In 1990, NBC introduced a new sitcom that will be one of the first to bring hip hop to American television, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. The star of the show was the then 21-year-old Grammy award-winning rapper, Will Smith, known by his stage name, The Fresh Prince. Being that Will Smith played a fictionalized version of himself on the show, it would appear that the show was based on his life. The story is based on true events, but not of Will Smith's life. This is a story all about how the real Fresh Prince is entertainment mogul, Benny Medina. From humble beginnings to VIP status, Benny Medina was a millionaire before the age of 30. As one of Hollywood's top executives, Medina has managed some of the biggest names, including Jennifer Lopez, Tyra Banks, and P. Diddy. He's produced hit TV shows and movies. He's also held executive roles at the nation's top record companies. As co-producer with Jeff Pollock, he's credited with casting Will for the lead role of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and bringing the idea for the show to his creators. We all know the Fresh Prince story. Will gets in one little fight with his mom and gets scared. Then he's sent from West Philadelphia to live with his aunt and uncle in Bel Air. While the true story narrative is similar, Mendina and his team turn his real life experience into a story more suitable for primetime television. Medina told the LA Times, we adjusted the premise of the sitcom to fit Will. My upbringing didn't have much comedy in it. The real Fresh Prince is from the Watts neighborhood of East LA, and his childhood was a difficult one. Medina was placed in and out of foster homes after the passing of his mother when he was just eight years old, he told Ebony Magazine. My earliest childhood memory is a green room. That was the color of the walls in the home I was put into after my mom died of cancer. In the book Moguls and Mad Men, Medina recalls that before his mom passed, she would encourage creativity with talent shows amongst him and his siblings, who also sang and played instruments. When my mom died, my world fell apart. And to this day, it's never been put back together. She's the only friend I ever had. The only real form of consistent encouragement and love came from her. I still like to have a friend like my mom. Neither was he able to foster a relationship with his father, well-known jazz musician Ahmad Mendina, as he spent many years in and out of prison. Benny consistently ran away from different foster homes to be sent back to the state institution. He claims, they were more interested in the checks than me. Medina's aunt Irma Sykes took him and his four siblings in a year after his mother's passing, but due to being frequently beaten by his aunt's husband, Roselle Sykes, founder of St. Elmo's Village in LA, Medina spent a lot of time in the streets with a rough crowd. It was me and these six cats. We were selling joints and red devils. We had a house that we rented out. At 12 years old, we were throwing rum punch parties. Mendina would be one of the only one of his peers to make it out of the streets, ironically in large part due to his uncle. The art community that Roselle founded attracted many wealthy people. And one of those people were nine-year-old Alan Elliott, who Mendina grew a close bond with. Alan's father was TV and film composer Jack Elliott, and their family was from Beverly Hills. Eventually, Jack Elliott agreed to allow Benny to move into their refurbished garage, and soon after, he was attending the prestigious Beverly Hills High School. I fixed up the garage in the back of the house and became part of the family. The deal was I had to keep a job, keep the grades up, and be respectful of household rules. This is the part of Benny Medina's life that the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is based on. Though the real story is not as colorful as the television show portrays, Benny grew tired of being beaten by Roselle, and living in poverty and decided the next time he went over to the Elliots, he wouldn't go back. Jack initially wouldn't allow Benny to stay, but his wife Bobby played a big role in his change of heart. When I finally sat down and told Bobby how life was with Roselle, she couldn't believe it because she always thought he was so great, but I never showed them my scars. Medina recalls that Beverly Hills High was like a new world, and much like the fictional Bel Air Academy from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air and his modern reboot, Bel Air, he remembers that Beverly Hills High had a swimming pool in the gym, the football team had uniforms, the photography class had Nikon cameras. While attending Beverly Hills High, Medina made another important friend, Kerry Gordy, the son of Motown Records founder, Barry Gordy Jr. Medina lived with the Gordys in their Bel Air mansion for some time, and the premise of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air is actually a combination of his time with the Elliots and the Gordys. A season five episode gave a nod to Mendina's mentor. Gordy! Ashley, that is Gordy Berry. That is the biggest record producer in the world. We got a packed house out there. Your entire career rests on this moment. There will never be another chance like this. Your future, my future, everything is riding on this performance. One more thing, relax. Will and Carlson's relationship in the show is said to have been loosely based on the antics of Carrie Gordy and Benny Medina as teens. Their real life friendship paved the way for the opportunity for Medina to become Barry Gordy's protege, which was the beginning of his impressive career in entertainment. I always became the kid in the house. I was Barry's tennis buddy in the morning and chef bottle washer flunky out here. I wish more people could have sat around that guy. Barry was amazing. That household was where I learned A&R. In 1979, at 21 years old, Medina along with 
Kerry Gordy and other industry peers formed the R&B and disco group called Apollo. Under Gordy and Motown Records with Benny as the lead vocalist. Originally called Kryptonite, the band was forced to change their name due to legalities with the Superman trademark. They're known for their first single which proclaimed, It's your duty to shake your booty. Astro Disco. Although the single did well, Motown's interest in Apollo soon declined and its self-titled album will be the only release from the group. Medina went from staff writer and producer at Motown where he got to produce Smokey Robinson and other acts like Tina Marie, Rick James, and The Temptations. And he became the head of A&R at only 24 years old. In 1987, Medina left Motown with the reputation of having the best eye for the hottest new talent. After being offered one of the most complicated and impressive deals of any new executive at the time, Time, he became vice president of Urban Music at Warner Brothers Records, which is now Warner Records. Medina was in charge of Warner Bros' entire roster of black artists that ranged from Prince to Tevin Campbell, Queen Latifah, and Big Daddy Kane. In a time where hip hop and R&B was turning into mainstream pop culture, Benny sparked a change in how the black music department at Warner Bros was perceived. He made millions of dollars as the youngest black vice president of a major record label. By this time, Medina had begun to develop TV projects with his longtime friend and now business partner, Jeff Pollock. The two met at a card game in the 1980s and bond over their mutual love of film, television, and music. Of the many ideas Medina and Pollock had for television, one was based on the story of Benny's life as a fish out of water in Beverly Hills in his teenage years. Being that the black kid who moves in with the white family narrative was way overdone by this time, Medina decided to make the portrayal of the Elliots a black family. That way we could explore black on black prejudice as well as black class differences. After meeting Will Smith at the Arsenio Hall show, Medina had found the young man that would use his name and likeness to tell his story to millions of viewers. He had pitched the idea with the request to have Will play the lead to music mogul Quincy Jones, who was newly working in television as well after signing a deal with Time Warner. Jones was impressed and set up a meeting with Medina and NBC president Brandon Tartikoff. Medina was giving eight minutes to sell his vision. He told Ebony Magazine that he was talking so fast that when he looked around, Quincy's eyes was bugged. But in those eight minutes, Benny must have sold the NBC president because he stood up and shook his hand and responded, keep life and walked out of the door. The next day, Medina got a call from Tartikoff's assistant saying that he was interested, but not before seeing the fresh prints in action, and he needed to see it then and there. This would prove to be a challenge because Will was in Detroit for a show, and Quincy was celebrating his 57th birthday in his home in LA. But when he got the call, Will traveled 17 hours straight by plane and bus and made it into Quincy Jones's living room. Benny walks me in and introduced me to Quincy and say, hey man, you know, I saw your music videos. Tell me your rap name again. All right, good. That's what we're going to call the show. Will quickly found out that this will be an impromptu audition. They're at Quincy Jones' birthday party in front of all his celebrity friends and a dozen of NBC executives. Take 10 minutes, study the script, and I'm going to clear all the stuff out the living room, and we're going to have everybody sit down. We're going to do an audition. After his audition and an applause from the guests, the top players of NBC negotiated and signed paperwork from their limos parked outside of Quincy's house. The deal was done, and the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was underway. The show was went on to be a hit for NBC, running for a total of 140 episodes over six seasons. The success of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air led Medina to become Will Smith's manager and aided the launch of his management and production comedy, Medina slash Pollock Entertainment in 1993, which became Head Print Entertainment in 95. The company hosted a roster of high-profile clients, including Mariah Carey, Tyra Banks, and Jennifer Lopez, whom he manages today. The duo collaborated on a slew of films and TV projects, including the story for the feature film Above the Rim, starring Dwayne Martin, Tupac, Marlon Wayans, and Leon in 1994. They will go on to produce The Fighting Temptations in 2003 and The Tyra Banks Show in 2005. Head Print Entertainment closed in 2008. Benny Medina managed to create a life beyond his wildest dreams. He was able to use his challenges of his life to propel himself into fortunes and success, Medina told the LA Times. One problem I found growing up in the ghetto is you have a very limited perspective of what you think the world is. Moving from one extreme to the other gave me a real clear picture of how people get held back on the basis of their situation. Medina took his situation and turned it into a classic television show, a move that would help him solidify his place as one of the most respected executives in the industry. 
The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is a staple in American homes, and we have Benny Mendina and his life story to thank for that. A story that probably most closely resembles that of Will's character in the Fresh Prince dramatic reboot, Bel-Air, which premiered in February of 2022. Maybe we'll see more similarities in the real Fresh Prince in episodes to come. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all of our social media. And look out for our original content on our new streaming service at ComedyHype.com. For Comedy Hype News, it's been your boy K-Rock.